All right, this video is going to be a little more involved because now I'm going to show you how to stream or what's called drip feed a large program to an older machine that has limited memory. In this case, it's a Fanuc uh, 16i on a robo drill. It's going to be common for a lot of other Fanucs. Now, one thing that you could do if you have that option is this is an old machine that actually has a compact flash card. However, I don't know if it's due to options available or just age. My compact flash card, I cannot get anything to work there. So I actually have to drip feed this from a laptop that I have plugged in. There's a couple of things you're going to need. First of all, a computer of some sort. And then the next thing that you're going to need is a cable like this. So this cable is a USB cable that converts into a 25 pin serial connection. And on these machines, that serial connection is right in the front. So I'm just gonna plug it in. Now, I know that you can go and wire this in permanently, but honestly, this serial connection is sometimes a little problematic and it's, you have to be able to disconnect it and reconnect it just so that way everything plays well if something happens and a transfer stops halfway through. Um, so I'm gonna walk through, by best of memory, all of the parameters I set in order to get this to work. There's some configuration that needs to be done on the com computer side as well. So these old serial connections, you have to configure what's called the baud rate, the parity, and the um, communication or handshaking, whether that's software or hardware or both. What all of those means, the baud rate is how fast that data is going to be sent, the parities, whether it's looking, which signal it's looking for, and then the handshake is, how does it communicate to say, hey, I'm ready for the next line, send that along. So when we go here, I'm gonna start in my settings, so three down, age down, and I'm going to go to my settings. In this case, I'm not going to change my uh, parameter right flag because I don't need to, but I'm just going to come here and hit page down. And as you come through here, you will get to a settings all about your RS-232, which is what the serial connection is called interface. Now, I'm gonna pause for a second so one thing I forgot to mention is that we need to go check parameter 20 and the first page of the offset menu. All right. One thing I forgot to mention is that we need to set parameter 20 or the first page on your parameters menu, which is this right here, your input output channel. So you can either enter it there or right there in parameter number 20. Now, when you do that, let's go over to the big book of Fanuc, my handy yellow operator's manual here. You know, you're gonna see that zero is channel number one, and two is channel two, three is three, four is memory card, five is data server. Again, I can't get my memory card to work, and this machine was not equipped with the data server option as far as I can tell. So I have to use this either set to zero or one. <clears throat> After that, we're going to be looking over here at our parameter for 100. So I'm not gonna read the book to you, but if you look at how my parameter 100 is set up, you could see that I've got um, my bit number seven, which is the first one, right over here, is zero, which is that it's not a TV check, and I honestly have no idea what that means. But parameter number three, um, I have it set to one. My NCR, which is the end of block, I have that also set to one, which is only LF is output. Now I just realized though, I did make a mistake because I can't see the parameters that I wanted to show you, which are 101, 102, 103. So I have to go all the way back here and turn on this parameter right button. Oops, there we go. Change that to one, input. I get an alarm message that says parameter right is enabled, which I hope I know that, I just did it. 
So let's scroll down here to number 100 again. And this is where I remember that the parameters that I wanted to show you are not all on this uh, settings button. <laughs> the same parameters are available under the system button. And when you go to parameters in here, you will see more of them. So for example, you can come down here to parameter number 103, which is what I wanted to show you. That's your baud rate. Now you'll have to check your own manual to see what you should be setting that to. Um, in my case, 11 is 9600 bits per minute, which is what baud stands for. And that's important because you have to know how to set your computer to talk to your machine at the same speed. Now this next part of it, I haven't figured out how to do through the parameter screen, so if you have any idea, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna have to show you how to do it through the quick NC button, which I don't really use other than for this. So shout out to Methods Machine for helping me figure this one out. Let's go to uh, the quick button, and on that main page, you're probably not gonna be in, in this screen right here, so if you hit page 41 and down, page down, you're gonna end up on this screen you can move your use your arrows to select remote mode and simply turn that on. Now, I'm gonna turn mine off for just a second and I'm gonna press NC off. Now, when I go to automatic mode and I go to my program, so I'm gonna hit program, page down, you'll see that it would allow me to view, um, oops, you know, any programs that are loaded in memory here. And I don't have very many because this thing is, is very, very, <laughs> limited on memory. As, as you see, the, the total here is only 128 characters, uh, kilobytes of characters, not even, not even bytes, literally characters. So when I come here to quick and see, I'm going to turn my remote mode on and I'm going to get out of quick and see, but now my program is blank. Um, even though it'll show directory, when I hit cycle start, let's go back here back to my program screen. If I hit cycle start, nothing's going to happen right now because I'm not sending anything with my computer. So slow everything down and you see it's waiting here, LSK. That's the signal that, hey, I sent a command to the server, to the DNC, to start sending me data. I'm going to hit reset for right now. Let's go take a look at our computer settings. And I'm gonna put my big yellow fanic bible away so on the computer side there is a bunch of different things you could use to dnc which is the uh the data connection for your numeric control um, i'm using simco editor as a mastercam partner that's included with my installation of mastercam i've got it on this old computer here so i could run simco and i'm going to hit dnc setup and by default they give you two machines um, so i just edited that one. So I'm just going to hit setup down here and get the setup. Again, your machine, your DNC, whatever is going to be a little different, but the values are all the same. So the first one here under port, that's talking about what COM port is your USB. Now, if you don't know, um, you could just go to the start menu and type manage and go to computer management with your USB plugged in here. Go to the device manager. And I'm looking down here at ports. And you can see that my USB serial port is COM4. So I know that out of this list, I wanna choose COM4. The stop bits are set in those parameters. This one is two, which is the default. Parity is even. My baud rate, remember we checked that, is 97, 9600. And then data bits is seven. Again, these are all set on there. The flow control is hardware and software. And what that means is that either the machine can send a hardware code like, hey, I'm done sending things because the controller has nothing left to send, or it could send a software code where the machine requests, hey, send me more lines of data. Um, other than that, they, the default on off, transmit on and transmit off characters are default, that's fine. And 
So let's go look at transmit. I didn't have to change any of these, I don't believe, but I do have wait for transmit on checked. And I'm also removing ASCII zeros because they're, they're uh, some of the extra lines and things are not necessary and that seems to work better. On the receive side, I just have, again, everything left at default, but I am sending the transmit on. Um, directories are where everything's saved, so we should be good to go. So I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to press send, which will now send that over to the machine. Looking at my machine now, I'm going to go close my door, which my glass is pretty bad, but luckily the little iPad screen protector thing gives, gives me some visibility. But over on the machine, I'm gonna make sure that everything's set to slow, and I'm just gonna hit cycle start. Now you see everything kicks into action. It's transmitting across here. Over on the machine, it's jumped into motion. And here comes the coolant, and everything jumps in. So there you go, that is how you could transmit a file to your machine. Downside of doing it with DNC, of course, is that the machine, the computer has to be on the entire time you're sending. It cannot go to sleep or you'll run out of data. Um, but other than that, I can send a 500 megabyte file to this machine now and it'll run at good speed. Thanks for watching.